All right, welcome back to Sports Night Tonight. I am in the presence of greatness, an artist, singer, writer, super producer, the creator of New Jack Swing and countless other songs that you didn't even know that was him. And for a few years now, a Las Vegan, Mr. Teddy Riley in the building. How you doing, my I'm man? I'm doing wonderful, man. Thank you for having me. Ah, uh, this is truly an honor to have you in studio. I've been loving your music for a long time from Make It Last Forever to Bobby Brown to you looking at No Diggity. Um, but you also are a person that loves to give back. And you are in the community of Las Vegas now and you have something that's coming up, New Jack Swing Day, November, November 30th. Yes. Kind of tell me a little about that. How'd that come about? Well, you know, I've been just kind of doing a bunch of things with the officials here and, and my friend uh, Lawrence Weekly invited me to just do some things for the city because I told him just what I want to do. And when I told him the first time, he didn't believe me. Because a lot of celebrities have came here saying that they want to do something and they never follow through. So, and I can only say that the one who influenced me even more to do something here is uh, Tyson. Mike and, Tyson. Uh, Mike Tyson, he just dropped that real and quick. Flav. And Flav. And Flav. It's yeah. Flav and Flav. Just a couple guys that I know that I call talk to every once in a while. So I wanted to do something here with the kids because, you know, I love children. You know, and, and I've done a lot for so many people, inner city families. And now here's my big challenge to adopt uh, foster care kids and inner city kids to be a part of my transition, transition uh, center where we're showing kids how to transition into being, having a career, being a musician, be a coder, or whatever they want to be. So this is our goal, and we're going to do it here in Vegas. Here in Vegas. So obviously you're from New York, New York, Harlem. Yes. You're Harlem boy, Harlem world. I am. Um, <laughs> so how long have you been in Las Vegas? Like, when did you actually get out here? Actually, uh, almost three years. OK, so three yeah. years. And what was like the branch? I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just move to Las Vegas. Yeah, actually, I, I went and I tested it first. Okay, now, I, I moved into water? the Trump. Tower. Okay. Thanks to Mayweather, you know, he um, he actually gave me one of his places. Well, he rented me one of his places, and and uh, I loved it right away. I didn't even stay in the place maybe more than four times. Uh -huh. So I, as um, soon as I got here, my liaison and she showed me two houses, and the first house I loved so much, but it had a a leak in the ceiling, and I said I didn't want to do too much, but I wound up gutting out the, the house that I really got. <laughs> I did the whole house inside. Wow. So when I did it, I said I wanted to make it, you know, like a studio. So I kind of made it look like um, a studio that I always looked up to is uh, by Third World in Miami called Circle House. Okay. So I kind of made the house look like that inside. And uh, our next project is working on the outside and then I'm going to probably give it to the team as a music house because I'm going to be moving in another area. Another area of Las yeah. Vegas. Yes. Man, okay, so you're talking about, first of all, you got some property, get a house out here, kind of gut it out, make it look the way you want to look. Yes. But you also have some other projects as far as like property, uh, venue, the Eclipse, where the New Jack Swing Day will be. Yes. And folks, don't worry about the cost. I mean, it, it may be really expensive to you, which is free. You probably got that on you. I got that on right, me right. at all times. <laughs> it is free, November 30th out there, but the Eclipse building that you have, you're kind of telling me off camera about some of the projects and you know what you're going to be doing there with it well what we're doing now we just um, established our partnership with uh, Eclipse okay and what I'm doing with them is we're basically getting this uh, film theater on and movie theater because it's a media really a media center okay and uh, we're going to get it on the map you know because it's 20 it's actually a hundred percent concierge service Okay. You can eat, you can drink, you can, you know, you have... You can party there. Yeah, you can party there. We have parties there. We have comedy night. We have so many things going on at the Eclipse. We just want people to come out and enjoy. Enjoy the, what we are bringing forth as new pop culture in Vegas. Okay. Man, you should get a host for that thing. Um, God, How about man, yourself? He, he drift, you know what, brother? <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. You even think it would be nice. Like it would be nice. <laughs> you know, I, I came here for that reason to network with everyone. I you got know, you. We're, we have plans to throw something for all the businesses in Vegas so that people can know who we are and, 
and that we come in peace. We come to have fun with everybody, and, and it's even though it's black owned, yeah. we still want it to be a diverse place for everyone to go and have fun and meet celebrities because I'm definitely going to bring them out. You're going to bring them out? Oh, got to. Okay, okay. Fox. I done bought a few. Um, and uh, Flav got to see it, and he was just so amazed. And I had a bunch of people from The Voice, and yeah. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. Something that folks may not know, they should know, but we'll inform them of, of this. You may see the video at some point, but you have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yes. How much of an honor was that? Just watching you when they revealed it, I, what kind of emotion kind of comes over you see, man, that's Teddy Riley. Man, I didn't did this for this long, and they recognize me for what I've done. Well, I didn't really have the emotions, you know, about it because I really feel everything happens in God's time. And, you know, I just take everything as it comes, you know, and, and reserve myself for it, you know. You know, you got to reserve yourself because sometimes, you know, most people and a lot of our famous people, public figures have not gotten their flowers while they're here. Exactly. So I reserve myself to receive the flowers. There you go. Yeah. Stay humble. I, I mean, and just me, and this is the first time I've met you, but I can already tell you seem like a very humble person, very understated for someone who has accomplished what you've accomplished. I was um, talking with one of, the, uh, one of my coworkers, who's a younger guy, in his 20s, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, I got Teddy Riley, he's coming by the studio today. And you know, he's like, he's like and he looked up your discography. Mm -hmm. And he started going, oh my, he did, oh my God, oh my. I mean, he's a 20 something, he, oh my God, he did this, this. All the people that you've worked with, from Michael Jackson to Heavy D to Bobby Brown, mm -hmm. is there anyone that you have not worked with that you would have wanted to work with, past or present, that you can kind of think of? Um, I never got a chance to work with uh, Beyonce. Oh, that's a good one. Um, that's but good I work one. with Jay-Z. <laughs> you, you did some So work. it's close. I did You Belong to the City. Really? Yeah. You be like, okay, okay. And then, um, who else? Uh, J. Cole. Ooh. Yeah, J. Cole is, uh, he's actually signed with uh, my god brother and, and uh, Mark Pitts, who's one of my good friends. And, and I always respected him as not just an artist, but a producer as well. And I said, what it would be like for us to be in one room and just create something. Same thing with uh, Dr. Dre, but we already got to work with them. We never got to work together one on one. I got you. So I sent the, I sent the post out to him, you know, and I said, you know, we need to do this, just you and I, one on one. So would he, would, if you worked with him, would he rap and you would do the music, or would you guys? No, we both sing, would do would, everything. Like a cold, like a. We would be rapping. We would do whatever. I sing, you know. We could just. Just make a record. You over here making folks crazy now because they're going to be wanting something like that. I would want to see, hear something like that. Well, I, you and Dre? I, I think it will happen. Um, we, we share some of the same people from different camps and we know some of the same people. And um, they're actually, I think, in London working on his album and a bunch of stuff. They okay. just took it over there. So I own a studio in Paris. And uh, I Teddy was thinking Riley, of um, going there to cut the album for, it's my album for my book. Okay. Um, which is New Jack Swing, Remember the Time. Okay. And uh, it's never been a book out there with a soundtrack, so I said, I want to do that and maybe, you know, we'll get Dre to be on that. It really depends, because I don't really want to do too many features, because I want to tour the album, so. Okay, and that's actually something I wanted to get into as well, as far as like, you touring, are you touring nowadays? I mean. Can people get a chance? Obviously, on New Jack Swing Day, you'll be out there and you'll you'll perform. Um, I think Chauncey's supposed to be there as well. No, 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 I don't think this is a performance day. It's just doing, okay. New Jack Swing just Day. Just New Jack Swing Day. You're not gonna do anything. Okay. I actually decided to. I canceled a lot of dates November and December so that I can be home and you know do some work and work in the studio and okay. hang it with family. Because I really, I rarely get the time to do it. So I just said, you know, I'm cancel all the dates. And then we have a tour, a 40 city tour coming up next year. Okay. Yeah. And is it, is it you, someone like the video that we saw, you know, just- uh, Teddy and Friends, yeah. Okay. It's Teddy Riley and Friends and, you know, it'll be Black Street there, Dave Hollister, um, Guy with Damian Hall, 
And then uh, we may have Keith Sweat and uh, Dougie Fresh, Woo! SWV. You know, I kind of bring them all out and we just have fun with it. And then we do a party afterwards. We're looking to do um, the Orleans. We were, we were going to do it in December, but I said, no, let's wait till after the new year and let me spend this time with my family and everyone in Vegas. So I've been at the theater. I brought a couple of friends out and we're having fun. So I'm waiting for, I have some other friends coming in town, special friends there, celebrities. And I forgot to say, Tyrese is one of our, he's on the advisory board. Tyrese, wow. um, Lawrence Weekly. And uh, well, we're looking at um, looking at getting uh, Tyson, hopefully, to be on our advisory board so that we can bring more entertainment and just build the economy, you know? We need that here. Do Even though do? Vegas got money. <laughs> Vegas <laughs> but, has a couple of dollars. I need to put my, my hands on a couple of them dollars. But um, you said Mike Tyson, and being it is, I do sports and entertainment as well, but um, Mike Tyson, boxing, I hear you're a big boxing fan to fight Deontay Wilder last night. What did you think? I thought it was amazing. I knew he was going to win. Um, and I actually thought I knew he was going to knock him out because I kind of seen what he was doing. And um, I don't know if that was his plan, what he said, because I always watch afterwards oh, what made fight? him not throw many punches. Well, I thought by watching him, he was just timing and trying to get the timing of just knocking him out. Exactly, and yeah. that's all I seen in the last, like his last uh, minute of him about, about to knock him out. Yeah. I said, he's waiting and he's timing him. And I said to somebody, I said, watch this. We're in a car on our way to the airport. We're watching the, the fight on the phone. Uh -huh. I said, watch this, he's timing him. Next thing you know, we're about to go get my family Knockout. You didn't turn away, did you? No, you, okay, I was okay. there. You're still looking? Okay. I seen it. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, <laughs> this is God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he makes stuff happen on time, on his time. Yeah. But that knockout happened as we were getting out of the car. I was like, wait, wait, he's going to do it. And he said, he knocked him Boom. out right there. Whew. It, it was a devastating knockout, devastating knockout. You know, Good I, I mean, I spent a lot of time with, um, I went to, Tyson fights with Tyson and but I was never the one to walk out you know like how the artists walk out with the I said no I don't want to do that I want to be on the side because I I'm a real big boxing fan and I like to see the techniques of all the different boxes okay um and that's just me so with that said um, you have to be a fan of Las Vegas you talked about him already but Mayweather if you like technical boxing and because yes. and I have those pictures too, if you want. It's, that's like my brother, you know, he's one that I kind of look up to because what he's doing in boxing is what I want to do in touring. See, um, and he, he's got the right teacher behind him who's also taught us, Al Heyman. Al Heyman's the You know, genius, so yeah. he taught us and we just came up watching Al Heyman. And I said, you know what? This is what I want to do, but I want to be the performance, not the Al Heyman, so I need my Al Heyman. I got you. You know what I'm saying? I got so you. that's uh, and I, and and he's the perfect person that you know to look at doing that and look up to doing that, you know, because he's so successful with it. Man, no matter what he do, extremely successful, and he's yeah. coming back. You oh. heard that? He he just announced on Twitter or on, on uh, Instagram. He he said, "I'm coming back in 2020." I have to see it for myself. <laughs> you got to see it to believe it. Yeah, because, you know, most people who are true fans of Mayweather, you know, some of us have heart attacks sometimes, like waiting for him, like, yo, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? So I'll wait till he say. No, he actually said it. No. Oh, to actually, okay. Say to everyone, I like, this you. is it. Or, you know, everybody would, you know, pretty much see him, you know, working out, but it's him working out because that's his, that's what he do. Seems and shape you know, at all but times. um, when he actually do it, then we know. Like we, I knew he was gonna do the fight with uh, the, uh yeah, McGregor. I knew he was gonna do that fight because actually it was around the same time my daughter's getting married and she got married here. Okay. At my friend's house and we gave it there and I had to fly a jet, 
So I was coming in on a jet, and he was leaving out on his jet. He ran into it. And uh, he said, I said, you're going really, to do this fight? And he said, yeah, I'm going to do it. They just got to give me the right money to do it. Go ahead and get this cool 250. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. He's the <laughs> businessman. That's what I respect, and I, I look up to him for that. You know, you know, a lot of people should learn from it because at the end of the day, he could talk all the mess, but he's a great businessman. No, I, I completely agree, completely agree. Now, I've read and heard that you're a fan of, of movies and movie production. Um, is it something with Martin Luther King that you were, you were working on, a, a project? Actually, we have the documentary um, of Ma uh, Martin Luther King when he got stabbed, you know, in a hotel, the Teresa Hotel. And, and that documentary, uh, my friend Al, you know, he actually came up with all the different information and put it in documentary form. So um, we're looking to really get it to everyone with the new project that I'm working on and actually my new partnership with Vu's TV, which um, I want to tell you about. It's a network. Please do. That have been approved to, we can do internet uh, programming. And uh, we're actually going to be doing it in Dubai. We're going to do it here. And, and we are looking for content, more content to even, you know, make it bigger, you know, sort of like what Revolt is doing, but on another level, because we have channels. Gotcha. So my goal as a publisher is to bring in more content makers. Bring them in, they'll have their channel, and they can display what they want and not have to worry about where it's going, the demographics, and who is it targeting, because we have actually we have the platform to target wherever we want. Wow. To whatever demographics. Okay. So these are all the things that I've been doing here, and, and it's a lot more. This is just what's happening right now and what we're moving forward with. The tip of the iceberg, so, yeah. the tip of the iceberg. Okay. So perfect timing. Look at that. New Jack Swing Day, November 30th at the Eclipse Theater. Uh, and that's something throughout uh, uh, all of Las Vegas can, can celebrate with you in yeah. us. Something else I didn't bring up, and I was going to, you were given the key to the city. Yes. Man. Yes. Uh, what haven't you done? <laughs> well, you know, like I said, it's just uh, all the things that's coming forth, you know, that everybody thinks should have happened a long time ago. I like it now because I'm in a great place. Um, my family, everybody's together and my daughters are just blossoming. So just to see all the things that happen. And then, you know, my mom is still here to witness. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. You know, she was there at the star and she had a great time with all my children. And what a, it's really not my flowers, it's her flowers. You know, me getting my star is her flowers. Seeing all of this before she meet our maker. Yeah, I just, I'm just happy about that alone. I got so. you. I wonder, how did that, how did that come about? I mean, because for someone who had been in Vegas for just a, a, a couple of years, obviously you've done some work with Lawrence Weekly, but I mean, getting the key to the city, was that somewhat of a shock to you? Or, I mean, I, you know, you said that it came at the right time, but still, you had only been in Vegas a little bit. That's a, that's a beautiful award to get. Well, it is. And, and getting the key to the city is, uh, Getting it here. See, I've never gotten the key to my own city. Yeah. <laughs> that's we that's crazy. We need to send this to him. I don't know what y'all doing, um, but... <laughs> but I feel like uh, getting it before getting the key to my city was, you know, kind of crazy. But, you know, it's, it's okay because um, I feel like they all will recognize soon. And I'm not worried about anybody recognizing because the more I just keep going, the more people will recognize who, what I've done and who I am, because a lot of people don't know who I am. Yeah, I mean, people gotta get their head out of the sand, okay. <laughs> people need to get their head out of the sand. Now, um, really one of the last questions I wanted to ask you. Uh, I, I, I heard, obviously, you're from Harlem, Harlem Globetrotters. They had an event here. They actually have a, a Harlem Globetrotter that's actually from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. But you were at one of the events, got a chance to sign some autographs. Um, I guess you probably see a lot of pride when you see the Harlem Globetrotters being oh, yeah. a Harlem boy and everything else. Well, not only I, I went to go see them and sign autographs, but I did the music 
for the Harlem Globetrotters, uh, the <laughs> last, you know, the anniversary, the last anniversary. And um, that's the reason why I was there. Ah. But at the same time, I've never seen the Globetrotters actually perform. We couldn't afford it. But you, know, you could afford it for a few years now. When I was living in the projects, we couldn't afford to go. And then getting into business, I didn't really have no, you know time, time to go yeah, anywhere. But seeing it now, you know, and taking my kids to see it's it. It's a great it's show. Amazing show. It's a great show. It is. Surprise, I, I took my daughters there, and I was almost surprised with how good of a show it was. I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very entertaining, isn't it? It is. It is. It's, it's actually better than what I've seen on TV back Absolutely. in the day. It's because, you know, these kids are doing even more tricks with the ball. So it's amazing, you know, yeah, just no. even being a part, you know, no. and being from Harlem. Of course, you being from Harlem. You never got it. You never picked up basketball, though, huh? I did. Little baby I game? I tell you about those days. Oh, you got little, little baby but game. But I did. No, actually, I, I used to go to a center called Salem Center and another center called Each One Teach One. Okay. This is what you see when um, that slogan on uh, the pressure okay. movie. And it's the organization, the organization is called Each One Teach each One. One. Well, Each One Teach One was a center where kids were able to go, stay off the streets, and play ball, softball, basketball, shoot pool, okay, which, was, okay. which is my thing, oh, you, oh, you and bowl. Cool I state. was on the bowling um, team. A little bowling skill, huh? Yeah. I play Chris a little. Paul, Chris, Chris Paul, I know he's a good bowler. Uh, Jerome Bettis is a really good bowler. Some these sports guys that are bowlers. They're cool. They can't get with you? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, the man back here shaking I'm humble his head about like it, he got no problem. I'm with. humble about it, but guy with bowlers. Dave Hollister, a bowler. Really? 200 average. See? But I shouldn't have put it out there like that. Of course. We want people to come and just... <laughs> <laughs> Rock with us, you know. They want to come out there. You can't hustle them now. They already know that you got a good bowling game. And and then some of our guys here, like you know, Cassio. We all two and Dr. Dave. You guys know Dr. Dave. Yeah. Who, he's one of our anesthesiologists here in Vegas. Okay. We all go on the weekends. My guy from um, uh, he has a clothing line called the Butcher Barber. And then and it's not about the Butcher Barber. It's just it's a uh, a thing where we say. It's, we're sharp. I get you know? it. I get it. So it's the Butcher Barber um, clothing line Man, apparel. To, you need to holler at me. I mean, <laughs> I'm just but um, yeah, a lot of us go bowling. We will go to South Point and we'll go to uh, Suncoast. And I forgot Flavor Flav. He's a bowler as well. Amazing bowler. He's talking trash when he's bowling. Flavor too. Flav. Um, well, it's, uh, we have a lot of people from the area, and we just go. I heard all that. Okay. Jonathan Ogden, who's a former NFL Hall of Famer who lives in Las Vegas, not from here, but lives in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. actually sponsors a bowling, um, a bowling night that our station sponsors. I think we need to get you on there. We'll love to go. Yeah. I'll bring all the guys out, and it'll be really nice. It'll be fun. And then we can bring some of the people from Vegas to come and join us because this is what we used to do in L.A., Damien and myself and Aaron and Dave, we used to be on the celebrity team there. Celebrity and we played team. against everybody, the cast of all the shows, you know, and this is what we do for fun. Okay. Who used to win? We would win, and then they would bring out the, the actual pro pros at like okay. 250. Okay, and I got you. They would bring, put one guy on one team just to, so they can beat us. I got you. We would also bowl out in uh, Atlanta for Sickle Cell. We Ooh. do it every year, and um, oh God. Was T. Boz involved in that? Um, Wait, she's, I think, one of the sponsors for it because um, they give it every year, and okay. you know we'll take second place and let some of the OGs just <laughs> knock us out of the box. But we go to have fun. So every year around August. I think they do it August, right before my birthday. And so if anybody in Atlanta, because this, I know this is going to get to Atlanta. So everybody in Atlanta next year will be doing the sickle cell thing and look out for it. Um, one of our sisters, she, uh, she sponsors everything. She get all the sponsors in and we both. With Mr. Teddy Riley. That's what I'm talking about. One last yeah. time. 
November 30th, New Jack Swing Day, right here in Las Vegas with this man, Teddy Riley, the man, the myth, the legend, the creator of New Jack Swing. I wanted to ask you this on the way out, but I might as well really quick. Who came up with the name New Jack Swing? Was it you or did, was it Andre Harrell? Did someone, who, who cared? Barry Michael Cooper. Barry Michael Cooper. Who's like my big brother. In fact, uh, we're doing things together. He's part of my documentary because, you know, he's the one that gave me the name and, and uh, I ran with it. And it's still running. Here you have it, it's still going. Still <laughs> running, know, still having running. Having fun with it. So he's still here in the flesh and I have to give him his flowers. Him and Fat Five Freddy. Fat Five. Fat Five Freddy has been the guy, you know, every time Fab would see me, he would be like, Teddy, take it to the bridge. And I actually <laughs> used that slogan in one of my songs called Young Buck OG. And it's almost like a, a song that we pass the torch. Young Buck OG is gonna be the uh, theme of a couple of my shows because it shows the role model. And that's why I made the song. Okay. So, so we're, play, we're gonna play it at the, uh, at the actual uh, New, Jack Swing Day. New Jack Swing Day. Okay. We'll play Young Buck OG. But it'll never come out. It'll always be, it'll be actually for my documentary. Okay. You'll hear it there and you'll hear it for the, um, the new show we have coming. I cannot tell you what it is, but it's going to be huge for the kids, definitely. And it's a time where you'll see role models become real role models with newcomers. We call them the New Jacks. And that's all I can tell you. But when you, this is it. This show is the show of life. I'll tell you off air. Okay. 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 Right. And just so you know, I'll tell you this on air. Anytime you want to come on here to promote anything that you're doing here in Las Vegas, you have an open invitation. As long CD. as I can come with my, my Vegas crew, because I'm developing something that is so incredible, and you'll see my incredible diverse team. And we're just going to be doing some things around here to make differences, you know, especially for our inner city kids. We're trying hard to just keep them off the streets, so I got to put some music and I got to put some things in front of them where. They get to learn while they earn. I like that. They learn while they earn. You'll get it later. They get to learn, and this is what gets them to want to come and be a part, because they're learning something that they'll be able to earn money from. Not later, now. now. It's how fast they want their skills. They'll get, get to learn it right now. And I'm talking about music. I'm talking about coding. I'm talking about craft, art, people, you got a lot of artists right now. Yeah. I have a nephew who's an artist. He made his first, I think, two million dollars in Dubai. His first two million dollars, that's what he In Dubai story. painting. And this kid is amazing, I'll give you that information. But he's now, he did paintings for, for me, Will Smith, all the different celebrities. You know, now he's in Dubai just once a year, just selling a couple of pieces. And living his best life. Yes. Getting his little Duval on all day. So, and then I want everybody to know what I'm trying to develop here is I'm an ambassador of a school in New York called the Wall of Money. Okay. And these are for elementary school kids, uh, intermediate school and high school kids. And they're actually learning money, learning how to make money before 20. Everything rhyming. I've got to learn how to make money before 20. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, this is something that they are introducing in New York. I think it should be here as well because this is Money City. So if we could teach kids how to do that on just from high school and elementary school and show them how to do business plans and build their own IP, their own content early, we will actually turn the lives around of some of the kids out there that's, you know, in the streets, gang banging and all of that stuff. We can actually show them because that's where we came from. My uncle was one of the biggest gang bangers, one of them. And um, also affiliated with the, the paid and fool ha home. Harry O. Well, that, that was the Harlem. I went to school, high school, with, with Rich Porter. Yeah, yeah. But in California. Oh, okay. My okay. uncle, uh, Mike Concepcion, he's the guy that put the Crips and the Bloods together with all in the same gang. Ah, yeah. that's my song too. So he, he's the guy that 
I actually made a difference with as well because I brought him in the music industry. And we partnered up on doing Black Street. And he'll tell you today I'm the guy that made him wealthy. Man, yeah. we definitely need to talk off camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Teddy Riley, everybody. Teddy Riley, you see it right there. New Jack Swing Day, November 30th. Whew, thank you again for man, coming along. Thank you, along, thank man. you for thank having you. me. Ah, pleasure, pleasure. Man.